Hi there, everybody. It's time again for another edition of Starry Skies, our regular monthly magazine about what you can see in the night skies. I'm Mark Hardacre. And I'm Steve Tonkin, and we'll be guiding you through some delights this month in the constellation, I believe, of the bull, Mark. Yeah, we decided to go for Taurus the bull this month, so uh, nothing to do with the zodiac, nothing to do with astrology. We're talking about the astronomy of the the science. That's correct. The The science science of the skies. Yeah, so for astronomers, this month is particularly good, Steve, isn't it? December is a great month for us. Oh, it is. It is. Fa- it's, it's fantastic. It's dark for a long, long time, which gives us yep. a, a whole variety of things we can see between dusk and dawn, should we yep. choose to? Sun sets at about four o'clock, so by the time it's really dark, half past four, you know, bringing the yeah. kids home from school, finishing work, it's black, and the sun doesn't rise again till eight in the morning, and yeah. even later into January, yeah. actually. That's true, yeah. And uh, so we get lots of dark skies, which is perfect for astronomers. And particularly if you tr- if you want to get involved and you don't want to have to stay up all night, you've got the early evenings you can use now because they're so dark. But it is cold, and of course if you're outside for too long, not wrapped up, you get a bit of a cold like our Steve has today, haven't you? Yeah, that's not from being outside. That's because <laughs> Drinking it, this, out is, wet glasses. This, is, this is a viral infection. <laughs> I think it's from drinking out of wet glasses, but never mind. Yeah, okay. Anyway, we've got the solstice, haven't we? Uh, What's the solstice? What's that one? Well, if you look at where the position of the sunrise on the horizon, or the sunset, whichever you prefer, you'll see that towards this time of year it moves further and further and further south, and then it sticks in the same place for a few days. So the sun sticks, or sol sticks, solstice. Uh, I didn't know that Ah, yeah, and then it starts moving, and then day. it starts moving back, and you and you get this same phenomenon on the northern horizon at the end. Yeah, it changes its position very, very slightly from day to day, and so it's at its most southerly point, which means it gets l- not very high in the sky, and it's nice and weak. But once it's over, it means the days start growing longer. That's right. Not enormously no. to start with, <laughs> but they're getting longer. And that will be from Friday, the 22nd of December, at 3.27 in the morning. That's when the sun will reach its most southern port point in the sky. And from then on, it's summer, here we come. And then, of course, we, as astronomers, lose every day a few minutes of uh, night time. But anyway, it gets warmer. It gets warm. That's nice. Yeah. So what can we expect to see in the dark December skies then? Uh, obviously, the planets. There's the planets. There's... Um well, Jupiter is so obvious. People keep asking what it is, you know. And that's, what's that bright star up there? That is Jupiter. Yeah. And, it's, and that's delightful. Um, if you've got small telescope or even binoculars, you can look at it and you can see the moons that Galileo saw around it, yep. which got set him off on his journey to realizing that the sun was the center of the solar system, not the Earth. Yeah. And it really, e- even with binoculars, even with a just a a regular pair of 10 by 50 binoculars, you can see the disk of Jupiter. Yeah. It's, it's small, but it's definitely not a star. Yeah. And as Steve says, you can see the, the four Galilean moves that, moons that move around the planet very clearly. And it's getting higher and higher in the sky every year. Yes. So Jupiter is probably 50 degrees up in the sky right now. In, yeah. uh, and it'll get higher and higher. Yeah, yeah it goes through a 12-year cycle on yeah. that. And it's, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, obviously the king of the night right now. Um, We've also got the planet Saturn, which is a little little lower in the sky and is starting to become not as easy to see. Um, If you you go out at dusk uh, Mm. and have a look south, you'll see it there. It's in a barren bit of sky, uh, but it's not as bright as it used to be because the rings are closing. Uh, but again, with a small telescope, bigish binoculars, you will be able to see the rings. Yeah. You want to magnify at least 35 times, really, yeah. to yeah, be that's sure of seeing them. That's it. We just had some uh, astronomy outreach events, uh, Steve and I, recently. When we when we go out and show the planets and the stars to people, schools and scouts and guys and the rest, we love to get wow moments. <laughs> yeah, and indeed. A wow moment is when... Uh, a child looks down the telescope for the first time at Saturn and sees the rings and goes, wow. And we count them, don't we? We can. We can. We have wow competitions. Yes, it's great. And Mark always wins. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on from the silliness. So uh, 
the other bright planet that we have is in the morning sky still and won't yeah. be with us for too much longer. But uh, Venus is still very brilliant in the uh, morning sky. Arise, rises about four o'clock in the morning, and you really can't miss it. It's it's very very bright. Um, but it's going to disappear by the end of the year into January. We'll be losing it as it moves back behind the sun. Um, it, it moves around the sun once every 250-odd days. Something like Something that. Something like that. I, yeah, I don't we, remember. I, I look these things up yeah, for we, me to know. Google would know, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, check, check with Google if you want to know. But it's something like that. So, yeah. Um, there's another planet to see as well in the sky, which and then we're going to give you a bit of a challenge, uh, dear listeners, this one. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, we're going to give you a bit of a challenge. And if you succeed, please let us know on the Forest FM uh, website or on the Fording Bridge Astronomers or Wessex uh, Facebook pages. We're going to challenge you to see if you can see the planet Uranus. Okay? Okay. Now, I've, I've got a neat little way of finding it. Aha. I thought um, you would This have. month, yes. And it relies on, first of all, going to another of our WOW sites, which is Go to the Pleiades. Yes. The Seven Sisters. You can't miss them. This it looks like this little group of stars, um, little wagon-shaped group of stars, sometimes people think. And you put those, get those in binoculars. And the way to look at the thumbs in binoculars is you look at it, and then you put the binoculars in the way. Don't sort of start casting around the sky with binoculars to your eyes. It makes it really difficult to find anything. So you do that. And then just, just, just to the, to the right of that. And it's not that, it's really not that far. Scan across to the right. And you will see relatively easily. Um, it's, if you're using 10 by 50s, it'll be a little bit more than one field of view across. And you will see a little greenish looking star and that star is the planet uranus yeah. and if you watch it from week to week and it needs to be from week to week so it moves ever so slowly you'll notice its position changes yeah and and if you if again if you look um at your star map which we'll put online for you between the pleiades and jupiter both of which are so obvious in the sky yeah uh, Uranus is halfway between, yeah. there or thereabouts. Yeah, a bit closer to the Pleiades. A bit closer to the Pleiades. But it's with, with a pair of binoculars, see if you can pick it out and let us know if you see it. It's a, it's a distinct greenish star. Um, in a bigger telescope, you can see a disc, but not with mm. binoculars. So have a look and let us know if you can see it, because it's uh, at its best right now, and it's as bright as it will get, and uh, it's high up in the sky. So what else can we see in the month of December then, Steve? Well, if you're looking down a bit okay. from the Pleiades, yes. then you will see a reddish-looking star, which is the tip of a V on its side. It's not an orangey reddy star. Right. And that is a huge star. It's called Aldebaran. And that, of course, is the main star in Taurus in the Bull. In Taurus the Constellation. Our mm. Constellation of the Month. Yep. So what else can we see in the skies of December? Well, one of the most prominent constellations is Taurus, the bull. One of the zodiac constellations. One of the zodiac constellations. What does zodiac mean? What's all that about? Well, it's the zodiac is the circle of animals. <laughs> it's zoo, zodiac, <laughs> which is why all of them are living things, with one exception. Yeah, there's a good challenge for our listeners, too. Yeah. Which of those zodiac constellations that you read about in the paper every day, in the astrology bit, yeah. is not an animate being. Yes. And then look at the names of the stars in it and try and figure out why they are there. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, that's another complex story for another year. It is, it is indeed. Uh, but, so let's go back to Taurus. Yep. Um, and what's prominent about Taurus? What can, what can our, lead, our listeners see in Taurus? A very, very bright orange star. Mm. And it's at the tip of a V that will be on its side. So it's one of the tips, lower tip of the V, and that is Aldebaran. Yeah, and that's a lovely orangey, yellowy star, uh, very prominent. Just a little bit later in the month, you'll see it to the right, upper right of Orion, which we'll come to probably next month. Mm. Um, and the belt stars of Orion point up to Aldebaran. Indeed. But this Orion doesn't rise in December until the middle 
Well, nine, ten, eleven o'clock at night. Yeah. So we'll talk about Orion next month, shall we? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's better. So then we've got Aldebaran, and we've got the V. Then what's this little V of stars next to it? Well, it's a little group called the Hyades. Yeah. The Hyades, the April Rainers. In if you know your song, Green Grow the Rushes. Oh, I do. Yes, <laughs> it's eight for the April Rainer, and the Hyades with the April Rainers because later in the year or earlier next year, they will, be, they will set just before the sun sets. And it's called the heliacal setting, so when you can last see them. And that, they used to think, presaged the April showers. But ah, yeah. when, we're not there now. We're not going to get April showers in December, so... No, let's probably move on. not. <laughs> it's, it is a cluster. It's a thing called an open cluster, which are the clues in the name, really. It's just stars which are clustered together, but not particularly tightly. And this is one of the nearest ones to us. Yeah. So it's, de again, delightful in binoculars. All of these open clusters, if you can see them with the naked eye, look at them with binoculars, and you'll see three, four, five, six, seven, ten times maybe as many yeah. stars. Yeah. There's also a lovely naked eye double star in the Hyades. If you find Aldebaran, as mm -hmm. uh, Steve was just pointing out, obviously orange, look next to it a little bit further down the V, and there's a star there called Theta Tauri. Mm -hmm. And Theta Tauri is actually two stars close together, but you can separate them with the naked eye. You've got to sort of look and squint and avert your vision a bit and look again, but there it is. It's definitely a double star. So mm. give that a little test. Yeah. That's on the map as well. We've put the uh, uh, the map on the, on the Forest FM fan page and uh, on our Two Society uh, Facebook pages as well. So have a look for those. Yeah. So then we move along from the Hyades in the same direction up to the right and higher up, and there, of course, is the Pleiades, mm. which is one of the most delightful objects in the night sky, I think, in the northern night sky. Yeah, I think it, I, I think it's lovely. And it, every year when it starts coming back into the evening sky, it's one of the things I always go back to yeah. just to have a little look yeah. with binoculars, and it's like somebody has just scattered diamond dust onto black velvet. Yes. Like I said, these beautiful hot stars, so they've got a sort of bluish tint to them, yeah. and they really, really shine. And they were all formed more or less the same time. That's mm. how these open clusters come into being from clouds of gas which over eons collapse into stars that then ignite and burst into life all about the same time. And then as they grow older, they f separate and go their own ways like families do. Mm. Uh, the brothers wander off and the daughters go in a different direction, all that stuff. And uh, the Pleiades is reckoned to be uh, only around 20 million years old, yeah, I believe. Which is very, very young for, yeah. for any stars. Which is why it's so compact and close together. And you imagine that when the dinosaurs were walking on the earth, there was no Pleiades yeah. in the sky. How that's that somehow, but there must have been something there a big ball of a large nebula, or probably something. luminous gas. Yes, yeah, probably that's the, interesting. Yeah. But uh, again, we're talking about eye tests today, mm. and we're not we're not sponsored by Specsavers or anything no. like that. Or, no, and there are, other, no. there are other optical companies, of course. Oh, they are available, <laughs> I believe. Yes, <laughs> uh, but have a look at the Pleiades first with the naked eye on a dark night and see how many you can see. Uh, I would say the average person can see six, seven sometimes. Depends on the quality of your sky. Yeah, and yep. the quality of your eye. And the, qual the amount of light pollution around yep. as well. Yep. So, yeah. so from our new uh, observatory site up um, near Knowlton, we are able to, or I am able to see there, I saw nine last time, which is, that's the highest number I've ever seen. It was a super clear night. I've never seen more than uh, eight before, and I saw nine. That's really special to see that. So my eyes are either getting better or my glasses are now the right prescription. <laughs> yeah. Or it had just rained and cleared the sky. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So what else uh, in December? We've got uh, mid-December. We've got... Oh, oh. oh this, this is one of my favourites. Um, this is the Geminids Meteor Shower. Now, it is the best meteor shower of the year. Most people don't bother to see it because it's, it's chilly. Cold. But you don't have to get cold. If you dress up properly, you know, lots of warm layers, you can be toasty warm. And don't forget about your feet and your head and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, get a recliner out. Round about the 13th, 
There'll be no moon in the sky, so the sky will be dark. Get a few friends, sit round in a circle on recliners, look up. doesn't really matter where you look, as long as you're looking up. And just wait for these meteors, and they are gorgeous. And let's try and resolve this confusion. Um, even my own wife didn't know today what a meteor and a shooting star and a meteoroid and a meteorite and a bolide and a fireball all these different words for these objects can we try and get some clarity around it steve what's it what's a shooting star for it instance? is a star that literally shoots through the sky only it's not a star it's a it's actually a meteor right. which is what a meteor is so a shooting star and a meteor are the, the same, same thing, thing right yeah. okay but a meteor that's when it's flying through the atmosphere yeah. so so the streak of light we see that's a meteor that's or a, meteor. a shooting star what do we call it before it it's a meteoroid. That's when it's still in space still in before space. it's hit the atmosphere. Yeah. Okay, so as it flashes through the atmosphere, let's suppose it's a grain of sand and it burns up. Mm -hmm. So what happens to that dust? It just evaporates in the it atmosphere? Just, it just it, it, it ablates. It, it vaporizes right. and ionizes. Yeah. And that's what you see actually is the streak of light. Right. Now, it's not, as a lot of people think, it's not friction burning it up. It compresses air ahead of it. And you can try this with a bicycle pump. You put your thumb over the end of the bicycle pump and push really, really hard on the pump, and you'll feel it gets hot. You compress yep. any gas, it gets hot. These things coming through, they compress the air ahead of it. It gets so hot that it doesn't bother melting. It goes straight from a solid to a vapor, and that vapor is ionized, and it glows because of that. So that's a meteor. So the meteor shower that we're going to see, the Geminid meteor shower, is a shower of particles, dust, sand-sized, mm -hmm. that are currently meteoroids in the, in the atmosphere approaching us. Yep. By the middle of December, they'll be touching the top of the atmosphere. They'll, they'll streak through the night sky. Now, what happens if one is big enough? So now we have a meteor that's streaking through the atmosphere, mm -hmm. but instead of a grain of sand, it might be a potato or a football size. What happens to that? Well, it's going to be a heck of a lot brighter for a start. That's right, yeah. So you'll get a fireball or okay. a bolide. So a fireball is just a very bright meteor. Yeah. Right. And then when that, if that lands, it becomes a meteorite. Right. And so if someone thinks they've got one which isn't one, well, that's a meteor wrong. <laughs> now, meteor, the meteor, so you've got a meteoroid in space, meteor in the atmosphere, meteorite if it lands. And a, a fireball is only just a very bright one. Very, so very bright. A fireball might not land at all. It still no. might break up and, oh, yeah. and disperse in the atmosphere. But if the thing con uh, continues to the ground and impacts the ground, the thing that is physically on the ground that you can pick up is a meteorite. Yes. In other words, you can't see a meteorite in space or in the atmosphere. No. You can see it's still a meteor until it hits the ground. That's right. So I think that's... It, and it, it, it is confusing. I think we do tend to confuse ourselves by using so many different terms. Mm. Um, but a shooting star is no more, no less than a meteor. And uh, a meteorite is no more, no less than a meteor that's heavy enough to actually impact the ground. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so moving on. So Gemini, the, the Geminid meteors, um, as Steve said, peak, I think, on the 13th and yep. 14th of December. And it is one of the the best showers of the year. We expect around 100 meteors. This is ideal conditions, of course, per hour. Now, again, the, if you read the Daily Mail, and there are other papers available too, mm. or equivalent, they will say, look out for marvellous, magnificent meteor shower. Don't be conned by that. No. 100 meteors per hour is about one every 30 seconds. And you'll be lucky to see half that many yep. because you can't look at the whole sky at once. Yep. Your eyes are not perfect. The sky is not perfect. Yep. And, of course, it could be cloudy or misty that takes the fainter ones away. So the 100 mm. is an absolute ideal number calculated yeah. Um, on ideal conditions, and I expect we'd see probably one a minute or mm. even less. But the, but they are very bright. The Geminis are very bright meteors. Mm. And sometimes colourful as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, green ones and purple ones. But don't forget to wrap up well. That's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. 
I think that's about it for December. I think it is. I think that's about it for the year. It is. Uh, how long have we been doing this, Steve? Is it a year now? I can't remember when we started. It is getting old. Forget these things. But I think what we can do um, as, it's, as it's December is just wish everybody a really happy festive season and be peaceful. Enjoy it. And Indeed. we'll see you in the new year. Indeed. Thank you very much for listening to us babbling on as we yeah. sometimes do. But I uh, we'll hope you enjoy it. All the best. This is Mark Hardacre. And Steve Tonkin. Wishing you all the best.